You're listening to Nectar, sweet musings for your creative soul. And now your host, Stacey Maney. Today's episode is all about writing. And writing is something that I don't speak to a lot, but I want to shift a little more into because I'm focusing on my writing again. And I'm just realizing with the more women that I work with, that it's a really beautiful and accessible tool that we can begin to express and start to make that invisible world within us visible on the page. And it's such a powerful shift when we can create this form of self-expression, communication, and it really gives us a deeper understanding of our inner world and the emotions that we're feeling. And I'm so excited to get to talk to two teachers that really helped me in creating a container called the Writing Experience four years ago. And that container actually is where this podcast was born. I didn't know it at the time, but I was I ended up using a lot of the things I was writing in that container as some of the early episodes in this podcast. And so I want to introduce you to Andrea Owen and Amy Ehlers. Both of these women are best-selling authors, and they have multiple books through traditional publishers. And they have so much wisdom to share in their experiences in life and writing. Andrea Owen is a global speaker, a life coach, consultant, and author. And her books have been translated into 20 different languages in 23 countries. She's an amateur poet, a semi-devoted journaler, and she's always serving it up straight up with no BS ever. Amy Ehlers is an expert women's leadership coach, a keynote speaker, a best-selling author for over two decades, and she's birthed two book babies and two human babies, and the former have been translated into 10 languages. She's spoken on stages at places like Google and Oracle, and she is a truth teller that loves to wake women up to their power and inner wisdom. My wish for you as you listen to this episode is that if you have something within you that is calling to be shared, expressed, or taught, that something in this conversation will help move the dial for you to make that real and to get it out onto the page, whatever it is, so that it can begin to inform your next steps. Enjoy. So I am here with Amy and Andrea. And you were my teachers four years ago in the writing experience. And this feels like such a gift to have you here and get to talk about the writing experience and just this this magic tool that is writing and what is available to us when we unlock this tool for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So welcome, Andrea and Amy. And yeah, if you just want to introduce yourself and say what you're up to since four years ago. Some things have changed and happened. <laughs> Just a few things. Well, yeah, I know, right? Well, this is Amy Ehlers, and I'm so excited to be here. And I just love, Stacy, that you joined us when Andrea and I first joined forces to do the writing experience, because what a time we were in. We were in smack dab in the pandemic. It was a time of so much chaos and uncertainty. And you know what? It's still a time of a lot of chaos and uncertainty. I feel like everything's changed and nothing's changed. It seems like we just kind of go from one wave of uncertainty to another wave of uncertainty and chaos and wildness. It feels a little bit like the world that we're writing in these days. And so having tools like what you teach and what you help people do, Stacey, like what Andrea and I are doing in the writing experience of really giving people permission to really step forward and use writing, for example, as a form of self-expression can be so incredibly powerful. And for me, just a little bit about me, I've been a women's leadership coach for going on 24 years now. I started when I was 10 years old, clearly. Um, But I've been, you know, really, well, I I think the biggest thing about this and Andrea, Andrea and I both met through the coaching world and are both CTI trained coaches, the Coaches Training Institute. And so we have, we felt this sisterhood immediately when we met um, way back in the day when we first did. And I think the biggest thing for us is that 
we really recognize that we've had the privilege as coaches of seeing behind the mask, of being in the room, whether virtual or actually in a room where people actually drop the mask of like what they're pretending, like how they're like trying to pretend they have all their shit together or whatever. And we <laughs> see what's going on behind the mask as coaches. And that's such an honor and a privilege to be someone that people do that. And then we've created courses and content and all these things to continue to give people permission so we can be real and authentically create change. So that's, uh, Andrea, what about you, my dear? <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love all that. I'm like, oh, yeah, right? follow that. But just echo everything you said, but I, um, I'm i Andrea Owen, and in, professionally, I have three traditionally published books. Mm -hmm. I've had, uh, you know, to try to sound humble, I've had success beyond my wildest dreams, and people ask me, like, what's next for you? I'm like, I, I don't know. I've gone beyond what I ever anticipated going, and so as a child, from the time I was a child, I used writing for um, just self-expression. I wrote, you know, short stories as a kid and then poetry, angsty poetry into my teens and then didn't write throughout the entire decade of my twenties. I sort of lost myself in, in a relationship, picked it back up and have never, you know, haven't looked back since. And so I'm just so excited to be here talking about writing, whether it's for a, as a profession or as just a form of, I don't want to say just a, a beautiful form of self-expression and healing and understanding and self-awareness and awakening. And, and personally, um, just, you know, because somebody might be able to relate, I am currently trudging through my second divorce and um, creatively have celebrated by getting an entire sleeve of tattoos, which still I see sometimes in camera. And I'm like, is that my arm? It is my arm. <laughs> um, but, you know, tattoos are a form of self-expression and definitely creative. And so like Amy, I'm just excited to be here and just honored to be with you, Stacey, and talking about writing as a, a form of a creative outlet. So thank you for having us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's my next question. What is it about writing that lights you up? Mm -hmm. It completely lights you up. Go ahead, for Anne. me, it's, uh, you saw me chomp in there a little bit, huh? <laughs> uh, as an extrovert, and I know that's not everyone's experience, um, but personally, as someone who likes to process out loud, process my feelings, circumstances, all of it, it can help to also get it out on paper because I write some things come on the page that I didn't even know existed in my mind. And I think that is can be universal, whether you identify as an introvert or an extrovert. And it, it just is one of those things where it's really also incredibly beautiful to sit back and watch something be born, you know, something that didn't exist before. Like, you know, that beautiful painting behind you, Stacey, is another form of that. It's like writing can be the same way, whether, you know, it doesn't have to be a beautiful poem or a story or anything like that. It can just be your own consciousness. And, you know, I look back at, at old journals and like the woman, the girl that I was, and I'm honored to have been in that place and, and also to read where I was. And I know keeping all journals isn't for everyone, but um, I love doing it to be able to see that. And so, yeah, those are just off the top of my head where I get like emotional and excited about writing. What about you, Amy? Yeah. I mean, I think that it's such a powerful tool. Like you're saying, it's, you know, I always talk to women about really starting to uncover their inner wisdom and I always in my, in the books that I've written, I've written a couple of books that are traditionally published as well. And I talk a lot about turning down the volume on our inner critics, which I call the inner mean girl, and turning up the volume on our inner wisdom. And writing can be such a powerful tool to help clear out that inner mean girl racket, to help clear out the negative voices in our head, to like get them out of our head and onto the page so we can see the absurdity. Yeah, of yeah. like what our critics are saying to us. We are meaner to ourselves than we would be to our quote unquote worst enemy, which I know none of us here have like worst enemies, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, we should call the authorities on ourselves for how abusive we can be to ourselves. And so being able to get it out of our head, get it onto the page, and then also turn up the volume on your inner wisdom, being able to really use writing as a tool to connect you and nurture your relationship to that voice of truth within you writing can be incredibly powerful in that way. And it, and it totally lights me up. And then on top of that, you look at the writing that 
Andrea and I have done, and I'm sure you've done as well, Stacey, for people in our communities, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's as, like you think about how much we write all the time, whether it's posting something up on social media or posting something for a blog or a sub stack or um, sending out an email to your community. That is all writing and expression and being able to reach your hand out to say, hey, here's what's going on. Whether you're <clears throat> doing something where you're promoting a, a, an offering that you have, making an invitation to your community, or you're sharing something that's been on your heart and on your mind, communicating through writing and being able to reach people that way, let alone having books that are on the shelves of bookstores. I mean, it's so exciting. It lights me up to know that I have like these little self-love soldiers out in the world that are helping women turn down the volume on their inner critics. It completely lights me up. I mm -hmm. love it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. I It feels like such a tender topic for me. And I also get so passionate because I see so many women keeping these things inside and it's like and I think of myself too like I feel like I'm ending this old pattern of staying silent you know and, and when I had when I became a mom six years ago with my daughter it was like all of that came kind of flashing in my face of like the things I was holding in and it was like I can't I have to get this out for her for the future for myself and it's like we have like these keys inside of us or like these codes almost that can help. They serve others. I, I think first it serves us to see it and experience, you know, our own medicine. And then when we get them out, it's like it becomes a legacy. It becomes our voice. And when I think about my time in the writing experience, you know, it was four years ago. And I like there's so many moments I come back to things that we talked about in that class. And for me, it, yeah, it was the pandemic. And then I was, I also had a five month old son and I had my second child. And so I didn't realize it at the time, but that was like my postpartum. Wow. And it gives me chills. Cause yeah, when I saw your email come through that you were doing this again, I just, I had this whole revelation, like you, your container that you guys created, it really gave me room to find my voice. You know, it, it always starts with writing and expressing. You don't know what it is that's coming out. But I found my voice in that time and it, it has served me ever since. It's become just such a beautiful foundation for my business and my sacred work. Mm -hmm. And even like what I'm doing with my children and the way I'm creating our family. And I, I just wanted to thank you for that. And and share like so much of what you're creating to me is like you are creating space for us to find our voice, you know, and, and our voice becomes this guiding force in our life. And so, yeah. Yeah. Gosh. Thank I'm you like, so much. <laughs> like Amy's going to cry. On I know. A Monday morning. I know. I'm like tearing up over here. I mean, it's just so, uh, I just, I love this so much because I know that there's people watching right now who feel that way about you, Stacey and the work that you've done with them and for them as their teacher, as their coach, as their guide. And that's what this is all about. That's why mm -hmm. Andrea and I do what we do is being able to help, especially women find their voices and use that as a form of expression and as a form of changing the world, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just want to speak to that. Like just first, thank you so much. Like I, I think that as humans, many times we're sort of acknowledgement starved and so many of us, especially since the pandemic are behind screen. So we don't get to tell each other things like this and hear things like this from other people. So thank you so much. And we never know what the ripple effect is going to be. Like Amy just mentioned, like you joining our group all those years ago allowed, gave you kind of permission if you, if I can use that word to find Absolutely. your voice. And then now you have this podcast and you're expanding on your own work. And there's probably women in your circle who have felt that way too. And, and on and on and on. And I think one of the things I want to, to touch on that, cause it's in my mind and I, I don't want to walk away without talking mm -hmm. about it is what I see over and over again in communities like this one is that for women we are brought up to, it's a, it's this weird dichotomy of hearing that we are too emotional, that we're too sensitive, that we are too needy. We have issues. And especially, you know, in our romantic relationships, many times we try to like tamp down our emotions mm -hmm. and, and things like that. So we, you know, come into our thirties, forties and fifties and 
really sort of confused and lost in even recognizing our emotions, let alone processing them. And so I think what I see over and over again, and I'm, I'm assuming Amy can attest to this, in the groups and containers that we create, and the writing experience is no exception, is that it allows women to be able to process their emotions on paper, you know, usually privately, a, a little bit in the group to, to whatever they're comfortable with. But mm-hmm. I have found in the decade plus that I've been doing this is that that is where your magic is. Mm-hmm understanding and allowing room and space for your emotions is where the magic happens. And that will allow you, I mean, healing is amazing, but also your best creative work, your legacy that was already mentioned, just being a human and just like having a human experience. And personally, as someone who grew, you know, I'm a Gen Xer, grew up like emotions don't solve problems, you know, like just move on. But getting to a place and it took me until I was well into my thirties to even start this process, but getting into a place where I allowed my emotions to happen, allowed them to process, uh, just allowed them to fly and be was unlocking magic in my life, both personally and professionally. And I, I truly believe that writing can be like one of the most important catalysts for that. Mm. I love that. I love that so much. And I think that um, when you get to be in a group, and this is why we do the writing experience as a group, because Andrea and I both work with private private clients and so on and so forth and work even on book proposals and books with private clients. But there is so much magic in coming together in community and saying, you're not too much. And by the way, you're not too much. And by the way, you're not too much. And by the way, you're not too much. We are welcoming you in your fullest expression and all your emotions, like Andrea is saying, and really allowing women to come together in this space and be like, oh, great. We're, we've all been in the too much club, whatever form, like whether it was you were too quiet or you were too loud or you said too much or you said too little, whatever it is, we've all been told those messages. It, you know, we were nurtured in this world, let alone the patriarchal society and the white supremacy society and all the other things that we're dealing with. And it's like to to be like, no, this is a container where you can fully express who you are, get it out on the page and then actually give it to the world in whatever way you decide to or not decide to it can just be for you, too. But it is magical when women come together. There's just nothing like sisterhood like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. Like as we have all these shifts on the planet right now, it's so important to come together in collaboration. And I think that's one of the hardest parts for like artists and creatives or people who consider themselves introverts. It's like, oh, I'm used to doing like lone wolfing in my studio. Like this is, you know, it's vulnerable and different, but I agree the magic that happens when we give ourselves that time and space and we let ourselves like make contact with each other and I have chills again, because it's like, that's where the shift is. And yeah, it's like you get to practice expressing who you are in those containers first. And then it ripples out beyond that into your life and how you're showing up. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and um, it, it feels like I'll just add to that real quick. And there's beauty in the sisterhood, in the coming together, in the community. And, and this is such an important and, there is beauty in having some accountability. Mm-hmm. because like that's the thing like when we created the writing experience program and I'm sure you remember this Stacy. so we have you know once a week we have calls where people have access to us we answer questions we do some group coaching and then once a week for six weeks we also have these accountability also known as get shit done co-writing calls where you hop on and you actually we just connect in for a minute you get put in a small group you say what you're working on and then you actually write And to have that level of accountability has been magical. People have finished novels, started novels, started self-help books, gotten through on their book proposal, started a journaling practice finally for the first time in their lives. Like they've done all of these things because of that accountability, which is really such a huge part of the magic of coaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and uh, so on that note, you know, yeah, the accountability part is huge. Yeah. What for you two personally, because you are multiple books, traditionally published bestselling authors. That's so badass. <laughs> so what what did you do? I know there's not one easy answer, but like, what did you do that really ensured that success or like helped you go all in? Was there a shift you made or 
Was it someone you hired? Mm. If you had to, you had to go back to like one thing that really made a difference. Um, I can, I can do a few and I'll, I'll try to be brief here. So <laughs> one was, uh, I mean, I got sober in 2011 and that was a huge shift for me. And, uh, you know, for, for all, for what it's worth, when you make a big decision in your life like that to push something aside that no longer serves you, whether it is a relationship, whether it's a numbing, in my case, a numbing mechanism, maybe you need to change geography. Maybe you need to move out of your hometown or, or wherever it is that that's hard for you making a, a huge decision like that, I think was the first step for me because it was not long after that, maybe two months, maybe less than that, that I, I decided to write my first book. Um, the second piece was definitely uh, doing something to put my work out into the world or kind of, it, it held me accountable. So for me, blogging was big back then. And so for someone else, it might be a, a sub stack or a podcast, or even just you know, like letting your significant other read your work and things like that. It's just like a small form of accountability that that was super helpful. And then, as you mentioned, then I ended up hiring someone to help me with a book proposal because I just like didn't know how to do it. And so, so that was incredibly helpful as well. Um, and then also doing the mindset work around knowing that my work isn't for everyone. That was tough in the beginning because I was still, this was many, many years ago, I was still sort of under the guise of like, well, I want everyone to like me. I want everyone to like my work. I want everyone to like my writing voice and things like that. And I quickly found out, especially as someone who who um, has a very sort of like no nonsense um, and, and it can be a little short and curt <laughs> in my writing that it's not for everyone. <laughs> and, and just doing, getting coaching on that and understanding that that's, actually a good thing to not be for everyone. And, um, I also, the one last thing is I was, all, I've been, uh, I've had my own coaches and therapists and things like that, but also peer masterminds, which are free. And, you know, Amy has been a part of one form or another of a mastermind, but, you know, her and some of my other colleagues and friends just really, it's, it's it, there's something to be said about someone that knows you really well and that can call you forth and that's a, a coaches training institute term, like call you forth in a loving way, because sometimes, you know, tough love can be really, really tough to hear, but also people can sugarcoat too much. So having those, that small group of people that you trust that your nervous system is okay with so that they can say the things to you lovingly to be able to push you to that next level in your art, mm -hmm. just, ooh, hold those people close. Yeah. I love all of that so much. And it, it's so funny because you said, you know, ensured your success. I'm like, our success was not insured at all. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I just want you to know, like, if you're recording when it's insured. Oh, I've had some bombs, girl. Like, I was about that like, too. Oh my gosh. Like, had no idea, you know, and it's like, and then every book stands on its own two feet where it's like, oh, this one is great. This one is not so great. Like this you know, this course did great. This one did not so great. Like you never know. So there is like a thing of being an artist, being an entrepreneur, being a business owner, where you just kind of have to get over it and go, sometimes it's going to hit and sometimes it's going to miss. And fortunately for Andrea and I, our books have been relative hits and we're both so proud of languages that it's been, you know, converted to, translated to and all of that good stuff and getting the book deals and having multiple book offers and all of that stuff. But it wasn't. And by the way, like with my first book, I went out, um, I had a friend that referred me to an agent. I was lucky enough to have her take me on. We went out and I got all rejections. I did not get a book deal the first time I went out. And I think that's so important for people to know. It's a very common story. And basically they said to me, um, she was like, they're good rejections. I'm like, good and rejection? How did those even go together? I don't understand. And she said to me, well, they like you. They like the title. They like what the book's about, but you just don't have a big enough platform, which in essence, audience numbers, email list, social media following, whatever. These things are important if you decide to go the traditional publishing route, meaning you want to go out and get a book deal, Right. Those are not as relevant if you are self-publishing, which like when Andrea and I both came out with our first books, my first book was published in 2011. Self-publishing was nothing like it is today. Like now you can really have a beautiful self-published book in your hand and have no idea that it's self-published 
versus published by one of the big fives, for example. So our success was never assured. Like we have no idea. I remember my mom who's, I have, I'm such a fortunate human. I have an amazing mom and an amazing dad. Um, my mom was one of the first readers of my book and my first book. And, um, she said to me, Amy, the thing I admire most about this is you have no idea if this is ever going to go anywhere and you finished it and you did it anyways. She's like, I just, I can't believe that you were that brave and that courageous to do that. And I was like, thanks mom. Yeah. I, cause at that time I didn't know you needed to write a book proposal if you wanted a book deal. So I then had to go back to the drawing board and write a book proposal, which we get into in the writing experience program. Mm -hmm. But it was such a beautiful acknowledgement of sometimes we write and we put it out there in the world and it flops and you feel like it was all for naught, but it wasn't because just like with intentional creativity, you, you become who you want to become. You become this whole new iteration of yourself by the sheer process of just doing the work. The work has to be its own gift. That's the cake. The frosting is when you hit the bestseller list. The frosting is when you get the book deal. But the cake is you getting to express and hear your voice on the page like that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I've so never, I, have, I just want to say one quick thing, Stacey, like, especially if, if writing is a part of what you do for a living, or if, if you're someone who's attached to a number of people reading your stuff or your kids like it or whatever, I have never regretted anything that I've written because of like what Amy was just talking about. Mm. It all mm. has contributed to my growth, to my self-awareness, to my healing you know, and most of what I have written, most of what I have written has never been seen by anyone but me. Mm. And and I think that that is something that maybe people don't, don't realize is in it. Um, I have a friend who's a, a screenwriter and she said, for writers or people who love to write, writing for themselves is their self-care mm. without, with you knowing no one else will see this because you know, if, if you're going to do it, like to have it be the cake, like Amy was describing, you can't be thinking in the back of your mind, like who's going to read this? How many people are going to share this on social media? When am I going to get this on my sub stack by 8 PM tonight? Like that just, <laughs> it just soils the whole process yeah. of it. And, um, yeah, I'm gonna stop talking because I think this is important. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and I, I feel like I have to add one more thing too. Like my inner wisdom's like, tell this story. I think this is so powerful. So the night before the release of my first book, my friend, Mike Robbins, who's a published author, I think he has four or five books out now. And he had been such a kind guide and mentor and mastermind buddy for me when I was getting my first book deal and getting my book together. And he called me the night before my first book came out on launch day. And he said, Hey, Amy, I just wanted to remind you, I love you no matter what, like, even if you don't sell one book tomorrow. And I just burst into tears. Like I get choked up just thinking about it because I didn't realize how scared I was that of the rejection of that. Nobody was going to buy a book. I didn't know, like, I didn't even know I was holding that in me. And he had, he had given me a, um, a testimonial for the book, an endorsement for the book. And I was like, but you endorsed it. Like, what if it flops? He's like, I love you no matter what. Like, our friendship is not at risk. My admiration for you is not at risk. He's like, I don't think your husband's going to run away and leave you if you don't sell a book tomorrow. I don't think your kids are going to disown you. Like, he just got me real clear and real grounded that there was only something to gain. There was nothing to lose by putting my work out in the world. And that, and so I say that to all of you listening right now, if you are holding onto something that you know is ready for readers, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain by putting it out in the world. And even though, like Andrea said earlier, there are going to be some people that don't like it, that it's not their thing, whatever. It's so worth it for the people who do love it, who do get something from what you've written. Yeah. <laughs> I feel, yeah, I feel weight lifted. Weight yeah. Lifted. Yeah. Yeah. My last question would be then, and I know you're both moms, so I don't know. I, I just, I have this, this person in my mind who it's like, they're a mom, they're a mom. They have all these things going on, all these people needing things from them, right? Like a completely full plate. What would you say to that woman, you know, who knows that besides all that, she has something important inside of her to share with the world. And maybe she's stuck or she's scared or she can't find her voice. What would you say to her? 
that could help support her in that journey and that initiation, finding her voice? I would, the first thing that came to me is don't focus on that. Don't focus on the outcome being finding your voice. Just mm -hmm. focus on writing mm -hmm. as consistently as possible. You know, my writing, you know, my kids are, um, they're, they're coming up on birthdays here very, very shortly. They're going to be 17 and 15. And so, you know, I've written consistently since they were born. And I think about my own aging mama, who's how old is my mom? 81 or 82. And like what I would give to have journals from her, you know, like any time of her life, I don't care if it's about me. I don't care if it's about whatever, just to be able to see her handwriting and like watch her own journey, you know, when someday she passes. And so I partly am doing this as a legacy for my children. And so they can see I think it's important for mothers to be able to show themselves to their children beyond their role as their mom. Because it came as a surprise to me in 2016 when I lost my dad. It's going to sound weird, but maybe not. At his funeral, hearing people tell stories about him. And I was like, oh, he had a whole life outside of being my father. Mm -hmm. You know, like... <laughs> And what an honor it was for me to hear that and to hear people's experiences of him. And so I think that the more we can do that, it is a gift to our children to be able to, to pass on our legacy, whether, you know, it doesn't have to be like wisdom and lessons that you've learned and things like that. And, and honestly, like the, the writing experience, it, it, again, I just want to say this one quick thing that kind of deviates from the topic, but we create and safe spaces are tricky because, you know, especially like oh, trust issues, um, you got to, you got to really prove to me that this is a safe place. However, it's not necessarily a place where we get on our calls and like, here's, I'm going to verbally tell you like all of my deepest, darkest secrets. Right. It mm -hmm. is truly more about your own writing that you do. And it's the connection and the community that is created within the container that gives people the permission to be able to write privately on their own. So I just wanted to make that distinction uh, that it's not like a, you know, it's not like group therapy or anything like that, but the, the, the therapy is what happens in private on your own. And we have, we have two calls a week. And the second one is like a co-working space where we just get on and like as a group, right on our own and you can share your work or not. And so um, anyway, I, I deviated a little bit. I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that and, you know, whether you're up listening and you're a mom or not. Yeah. One of the things I, I love this question Stacy, because it's, I think it, and you know, Andrea and I's kids, you know, I have a tween and a teen, so they're in a different phase than like your children. And when, but like in 2011, I had only one child at that time and she was a baby. And then with my second book that when it came out, it, Evie, my youngest was like in the carrier. I was like in early labor when I was get on book deadline, like it was nuts. So we've, we've both walked through writing during really intense times of parenting where like your kid really wants your attention. Very different when they're tweens and teens. They're kind of like eye roll and whatever. But, um, but what I'll say is I think the biggest mindset shift I invite all the moms or caregivers of any kind, here's the mindset shift I want you to have. You working on your creativity, your writing, your painting, your art, whatever that is, is not in opposition to you being a caregiver and a parent and a mom. They are not opposing each other. They are not in conflict with one another. It is so important to get out of the mindset of like, either I'm with my children or I'm like abandoning them when I go and do my sacred work, right? No, it's like they are symbiotic. Your time with your children can then feed your creative time. Your creative time can then feed you being an even better mom. It is not in opposition to one another. And when I really got that, when I was like, oh, the more successful of an artist I can be, the more I can like lean into my expression that is going to benefit my family and benefit my children. It made it so that I was getting out of that either or paradox that so many moms find themselves in. So you taking time for yourself and doing your sacred work and doing your writing and doing your creative act will make you a better mom. I guarantee it. Because when I talk to moms that are exhausted, they are drained, they are burning out, they are 
with their children all the time, but not at all present, <laughs> right? They are the moms that are at the end of their rope. And they are the moms that are quite frankly, yelling at their kids, losing their shit more often, not be, having patience, like all of that. Whereas when I see women that have really found that way to give themselves the space, to give themselves permission, that is when they're writing sores. I remember um, a friend of mine, her youngest was finally going to preschool and she's also a writer. And she said to me, okay, 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 finally the kids are in preschool. I'm going to get on the, like, I am going to write my novel. It's going to happen. And, and it's, it's going to be from, you know, between eight and noon when both kids are in preschool, three days a week, and I'm going to finish my novel. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're going to nap. Mm -hmm. You're going to just nap. And she was like, what? But I, I, and I was like, just nap. And then if you want to write, write, but just take a freaking nap. And because I gave her that permission, she finished her novel because it was like, she gave herself the opportunity to rest and to have that time of replenishing her soul. And then from that overflow, she was able to go back to her writing. So I just want to say, if you're a tired mom, go take a nap. It's okay. Here, here. <laughs> I need to do that myself right now. I might take a nap after this. Yay! <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Oh my gosh. Yes. That is, that is the magic that you two are. And yeah, I just, anyone who is considering or looking for a space to create a space to be held accountable, you two are such powerhouses and just, yeah, the combination of your wisdom and your experience, I could not recommend you enough. And I am so grateful that I said yes to myself four years ago. It is, it actually is the reason this podcast is here. Some of the things I wrote turned into my first episodes. And so you never know where your writing journey will take you. But if writing is calling you, I would say answer it, get a piece of paper and just see what comes out and where it guides you. Um, so yeah, Amy and Andrea, thank you so much for being here. And I'll have links to sign up for the program. Is there any last minute shares you wanted to share about the program or anything else before we conclude here? Well, we're starting Lickety Split. I will say that we start on Wednesday, the 24th of July, six weeks, writingexperienceprogram.com is the URL where you can check out all of the details. And we would just welcome with open arms anyone from your community that's resonating with what we've shared here today. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just want to add really quick that, yeah, yeah, we are starting soon. <clears throat> and also I was just emailing with somebody this morning who was asking me about it and, um, you know, she's considering writing a book proposal, but that feels like a lot. So she's like, I'm almost like wanting to self-publish because I don't want to do a book proposal, uh, but, but money's kind of tight. Uh, do you think the program's for me? And I said, Honestly, the bonuses are worth the program alone. Oh, yeah. um, at whether you are really torn between self-publishing or hybrid or um, or traditional, the interviews that we have in there from the experts are, I mean, just top tier. And also, even if you don't want to write a book, I mean, we have people in the past that because you came in, Stacy, not like for sure, like wanting to write a book, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like people, we've had screenwriters in there. We've had ghostwriters. We've had, um, you know, casual, inconsistent journalers, people who are just curious, who like me and Amy and who sign up for all of our programs. So it, so it really is a plethora of, of people who identify as women. Um, but it's really for anyone who, who, uh, loves to be creative, but also might need a little push in that direction. Also who loves community and also understands, or at least is interested in writing for, uh, some kind, you know, self-awareness, growth, creative spirit, all that good stuff. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm so excited to see where this next group goes and like all the seeds that will be planted with their writing projects. So thank you so much for being here, for taking the time and just for doing this work in the world. I'm so grateful for both of you. Our We're pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting us. We're honored. Yeah, we're so grateful for you and just so grateful that the writing experience made such a difference in your life. And thank you for the work you're doing in the world. I know you're reaching people and making such a difference. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Nectar. Go to stacymaney.com and subscribe to get show updates, opportunities to go deeper, and inspiration sent straight to your inbox.